Gravity Forms is one of the most powerful form plugins for WordPress. Though the form builder itself is very intuitive and user friendly, you can't style the designs very well unless you're using custom CSS. This can be frustrated if you're a business owner building your own website and you don't have the time or desire to learn how to code a website. Luckily, there is a plugin you can install to make the design changes much easier that you can use from the regular Elementor page builder. It's called Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor, and in this video, I'll show you how to find all the plugins you need and how to use them to easily style your Gravity Forms without using any code. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is make sure that you have the plugins installed that you need to uh, complete this project. The first plugin you need is Elementor. This is my favorite page builder and if you're building a website and you're not a professional web designer, this plugin is going to make your life very easy. This is one of um, my favorite premium plugins so that means that I do pay for it but I'm very happy to pay for it because it makes my life very easy and it makes my clients lives um, when they're editing their websites very easy. Now for my second uh, favorite premium plugin I use for my projects, we have Gravity Forms. And of course, since this video is about styling your Gravity Form, you need to have Gravity Forms installed on your website. This is my second favorite premium uh, website plugin I use. Gravity Forms is super powerful. It's really easy to use and it's just really great to have a really good um, premium form plugin you use. And then lastly, we have ultimate add-ons for Elementor, and this is going to be the plugin that's going to make it so we can style Gravity Forms. It also has a lot of other things to help you with Elementor that Elementor doesn't do out of the box. Like I use this a lot for tables, um, but there's a whole bunch of other functionality. So this plugin actually came bundled when I bought Astra, which is the theme I use on my websites. Uh, so it was kind of like a bonus included in that, uh, which is great. Uh, links to all these plugins are gonna be in the description below. So once you guys have those things installed, hop back over to your website in your WordPress dashboard, and we're going to create our gravity form. So go to forms and then uh, new form and if you already have this you can skip I do have the different sections um, marked in the description if you haven't made your form yet go ahead and make your form right now I'm not gonna go too detailed into this because I do have another video uh, where I show you how to make a contact form using gravity form so I will link that below if you want a little bit more guidance with this step so here go ahead and title your form and then hit create form. From here, go ahead and create your form. Uh, just drag and drop the different fields you need. All right, so I got my form all done now, um, and then I'm going to click the save form button. And the next thing we have to do is make a page that the form is going to go on. Again, if you already have a page, you can skip forward. If you don't, go to pages and then choose add, add new. And then give your page a title. And since we're using Elementor, go to template and you're going to go want to choose um, Elementor full width and then hit publish and then hit publish again. And now you can click this edit with Elementor button up top. And now we're ready to design this form. Now in the Elementor elements area where it says search widget, go ahead and start typing gravity forms. And you're gonna see something come up that says Gravity Form Styler, and you're gonna see a little UAE um, icon in there. That means that is an ultimate add-ons for Elementor widget. And you can just take that widget, click on it, and drag it um, onto your page, wherever you want it to go. And from here, the first thing you have to do is select the form you are going to be working with. So in the dropdown where it says Select Form, pick your form. And there are a couple other things here you want to pay attention to. Um, this says title and description here. Um, if you want to display the title and uh, description that you put when you made your gravity form, you can. 
or you can hide it. Um, a lot of times if you already have uh, like your heading on the page, it might say something similar to your form. Like for example, if I go here and I start searching for the title widget and I drag over page title, um, it's the same title as my form. So I would hide it on the actual form so it wouldn't be duplicated. Okay, so let's go back to editing the form by clicking the uh, little pencil tool on that widget. Let me show you if you don't want to hide your title and description or you want to enter your own, you can also have the option to uh, choose the alignment of it. But again, I'm going to keep mine as none. All right, next let's move on to the form fields. And you have two options here where you can do the field style as a box or you can do it as an underline. I really like how underline looks a lot, so I'm going to leave that here. Next, you can choose the size of the fields. Um, I like them a little bigger. I don't need extra large. Let's try medium. And next, you can do the field padding. Now, what that is, that's the space in between the words that are typed in the field and the edge of the field. So let me show you that. So if I put my first name here and I change the padding, see right now it's only four, so that's four pixels in between, so that's very small. But if I put this at like 20, there's a lot of space. Or if I put this at 100, it's just way too much space, crazy amount of space. So let's keep it, let's go ahead and put it at 15. I feel like that's a reasonable amount of space. And then you've got a lot of different color options. You can change the width of your border. You can change the color of your border. You can choose a different color for the border for it to be active. Like, okay, let's go ahead and change this to um, gray. And then instead we'll set the active color to that lime green. So then when they are on that field, it changes green or whatever color you pick there. And then if you wanted to add rounded corners, you would round them here. You would just put a number. The higher the number, the more rounded the corners are going to be. So if it's five, it's kind of hard to tell. Let me change the background color of the field so you can see. Um, we'll just pick that bright green. So as it at five, it's kind of a slight rounded corner. If you wanted a much more rounded corner, you would just do a larger number. Like with 50, it's very, very round. I don't want any rounded corner here, so I'm going to put this at zero. I'm also going to bring the field background to a more normal color. Next, we have radio and check boxes. These are if you have radio fields or checkbox fields. Radio fields are those circle fields where it gives you a lot of options, but you can only choose one. And checkboxes are fields where it gives you a lot of options and you can pick a lot of different, um, different ones. So if you want to style those from here, you can click this where it says override current style. You can choose it to yes, and then you have all the options to change that here. I don't have any on my form, so I'm going to click no, close out of that. Section field is next. If you broke up your form into sections, this is where you would style it. You have control over text and the border size here, border color, and the spacing. Next, we can style the submit button. So I'm going to scroll down on my form. There's my submit button. You can choose how it's aligned, left, center, right, or justified. And then you can change the size of it. Small, let's see, extra large is pretty big. Um, medium is nice. I'm going to keep that like that. And then you can change the padding. Remember, the bigger the numbers, the more space there will be. And next, we can change the two states of the button. That means we have the normal state or the hover state. The normal state of this button is when it just exists. The hover state is when your user mouse is over it. So you see that it changes color here. So here we can modify a whole bunch of different things for the normal state of the button. And then if we click over to hover, uh, we can change them for the hover state. So for normal, I'm going to go ahead and actually make this background color that dark gray. And then I'm going to make the 
background color on hover uh, the lime green. So it's going to look like this. And that lime green is pretty fun, but the text, we need to make the text black. So we are going to move this all the way to this corner. And then when I mouse over it, we have black text on green, which makes more sense. Next, we have success and error messages. And from here, you can uh, change the colors and the fonts on all the different kind of messages that might pop up when somebody submits the form. Uh, whether it's an error or a success message, you can edit all of that right here. Next, let's click over to the style section. And with this widget, we actually do a lot of style changes in the content section. But we do have some spacing and typography options we can change here. So from here, you can move these sliders to adjust the spacing between the fields, the label bottom spacing, the input top spacing, and the input bottom spacing. Next, if we click on this typography dropdown, you can change the fonts for different parts of the form. So you can change the label, the text, the description, or the typography on the buttons. And then the advanced tab is the same advanced tab on all of the Elementor widgets. When you're done here, make sure to click apply and then click update. And there you go. Now you have a beautifully styled form that matches your website and branding without having to use any code. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And if I was helpful to you, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're creating your own website, I do have a freebie in the description for you. It is a nine step website roadmap and it will help you uh, and guide you on everything you need to do from start to finish to get your website live. Thank you so much for watching.